Today is the launch of the insane new Nvidia RTX 4090 and I have exclusively got my hands on… well, never you mind where I've got my hands. The point is, I'm not sponsored by anyone and have no special deals with brands, a fact which I'm not at all bitter about. So instead of testing out the latest and greatest ray tracingest graphics card, I've got my hands on my keyboard and mouse and I'll be exclusively looking for a more responsible way to spend 1700 quid. Hi, uh, Editing Iceberg here. Just a little note, uh, since initially scripting and recording this video, the UK pre-order price on the RTX 4090 has gone up another 20 quid, so it's now £1,699 or $1,699. Um, I'd written, recorded the whole video before I noticed this, so uh, rather than uh, recalculate all my prices and everything, I I'm, I'm just going to ignore it. I hope you understand. Last week, Austin Evans put together a Ryzen 7000 system for the same price as an RTX 4090, which, given how expensive that platform is right now, is really tying one hand behind your back. Building a superb performing gaming PC for less than the cost of an RTX 4090 using new but previous gen parts should hardly even be a challenge. For this video then, I decided to part out four separate gaming PCs for a total of no more than £1,679. I'm not actually buying them in this video as I don't have £1,679 to spare, but as it turns out, there is some crossover here with some content I have coming up. I'll talk more about that later. Before I get into that though, I'm just going to quickly have a go at what Austin did, a full high performance PC for the cost of a 4090. I have the advantage that I'm not limited to Ryzen 7000 and whatever else Micro Center has in stock, but I have the disadvantage of UK pricing. So I'll start with the i5-12400. I figure this is a good start for an all-round gaming PC. I could save a tenner with the F model, but the iGPU might be handy for video encoding and decoding, and I've got quite a big budget to play with here. I'll grab an MSI Z690 motherboard for it, so I've got room to upgrade to a K-SKU without having to swap the board out, 32GB of very boring DDR4-3200, and a nice sexy AK620, because, again, I can afford it. Storage, uh, let's just go for a decent value Gen 4 2TB NVMe, a nice 650W gold PSU, uh, I'll go for a Fractal Torrent Compact just for the look of the thing, but I might have to downgrade to an H510 Flow if I overspend on the GPU. RTX 3080s are still a bit on the expensive side and the FE models are still out of stock, but RX 6900 XTs are an absolute steal. And if there was any doubt about pairing a GeForce with an i5, the lower driver overhead of a Radeon should resolve that. Anyway, that all comes in at 1669 that's about £10 under budget, but I guess I can just blow all those savings on my fuel bill. My usual budgeting approach to PC building couldn't really find a better value system than this. Performance wise, the only stuff that compares with a modern i5 and RX 6900 XT are equally modern alternatives from the other brands, so other than scouring the used market to save a few quid on the same parts, I'd say that's a pretty satisfactory way to spend the money you might otherwise spend on an RTX 4090. But that's just one system. I said I'd come up with four, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Now, I could just part out a £420 system like I did last year, and just say I'd buy four of those, but that would be boring. Still, if I were to do that, I think I'd go with a new Ryzen 5 5500 6-core CPU, a used B450 motherboard, 16 gigs of DDR4-3200 and a 500 gig SATA SSD, also secondhand, and a new EVGA 600 white PSU and a cheap but decently spec case from eBuyer here in the UK. All that topped off with an 8 gigabyte RX 470 or 480 should come in just under £420. Repeat that four times and Bob's your mother's brother. Like I said, boring. No, if I'm going to try and make some content out of a spreadsheet and some websites, I'm at least going to try and spice it up. I usually prefer not to do the upgrade a pre-built thing on YouTube, but in the circumstances I think I can get away with it just this once. 
The one pre-built that has caught my eye and that doesn't get a lot of love on YouTube compared to the Optiplex is the Dell Precision. I found this T1700 with a Haswell Xeon roughly on par with an i7-4770 along with 16 gigs of RAM for just £95. It's missing storage, the stock power supply is usually just 290 watts and the included GPU is a Fire Pro based on the bubonic plague architecture so I'd probably add a cheap 250 gig SSD and a Quadro K2200 for about £60 in total. This should be good enough for 150 FPS plus in Valorant, as well as some equally big numbers in games like Fortnite Performance Mode and Rocket League. This one's a bit of a scaled back version of the £420 build I mentioned earlier, but with a target cost of about £350, I need to cut a few more corners. The Ryzen 5 5500 is probably a bit out of my newly reduced budget, so I'm going all the way back to first generation Zen with a Ryzen 5 1600. I could probably hunt around and maybe get a 1600 AF or 2600, but my budget doesn't really have room for more than about £70 for this part. Likewise, the 8GB RX 480 is just borderline too much for this budget, so I'd have to save an extra £15 to £20 by picking the 4GB model instead. I'm guilty of being a little bit obsessed with Intel's older HEDT platforms lately, so naturally I went with an Ivy Bridge Extreme setup for my third build. This i7-4930K is an overclockable 6-core that competes with 3rd gen Ryzen's and costs just £30. This amazing deal is kind of offset by the fact that motherboards can often cost the earth. There are a number of remanufactured models available these days from brands you might not have heard of, but if I were buying one today, I'd hold out for an auction on a known brand model for no more than about £100. I happen to have this Gigabyte X79 UD3, which I'd value at about that much. I'd make full use of the X79's quad channel support with 32 gigs of DDR3, the same 500 gigabyte SSD as the previous build, and a slightly beefier NZXT C650 power supply. For a GPU, I'd set this system up with a GTX 1070, one of my personal favourites and a great candidate for playing modern AAA games at 1080 and older ones at higher resolutions. So by my reckoning that leaves me with about £650 to spend on this last build and I think that's just enough to afford some more recent parts. The i5-10400F is a bit scarce on the used market right now, but shouldn't cost more than £100, and LGA1200 boards can be had for £75 or less. I'd get the same 16GB DDR4-3200 kit as the AMD build, and another 500GB SSD and NZXT power supply. I might splash out a bit on the case, the AeroCool 1 is among my favourite budget cases for build quality and features, even if it's aesthetically not to my taste. The star of the show here is the RX 6600 XT, occupying a whopping £270 of my budget, and I believe should be more than enough to run modern games at 1440 and high or even ultra settings. Now, if you've been hoping for some actual concrete benchmarks, I'm sorry to disappoint you, I didn't buy or build any of these PCs. I have tested the Quadro K2200 from the first PC in the past, as well as the RX 480 from the second build and the GTX 1070 from the third. Those videos are linked down below. I also plan to test several of the CPUs mentioned in this video in the coming weeks and months, so keep an eye on the channel for those videos coming soon. If you want to check my numbers, or just do some shopping, I'll include a few eBay and Amazon affiliate links down below. Aside from all that, what was the point of this video, exactly? It's not like I actually expect someone to buy four PCs instead of one graphics card. No. No, I was just making a point that maybe there's better ways to use your money than spending it all on one graphics card. Just something to think about. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.